Shutter speed, aperture, and ISO. The three most fundamental settings when it comes to photography. For a lot of first-time photographers though, mastering the balance between these three variables can be daunting and even frustrating at times, resulting in them keeping their digital cameras in fully automatic mode, unable to create the photos they want to create, and having to settle for what their camera thinks they want the photo to look like. Or you might have picked up your first film camera, which lacks any automatic settings, had no idea what you were doing with these settings, messed up a few rolls of film, and then retired it to a dusty old drawer. In today's video, I'm going to be explaining the basic manual camera settings in the way in which I wish it was explained to me when I started photography. Keeping it simple, leaving out all the nerdy bits, so you feel excited and confident to go out and take photos instead of feeling like you're revising for a photography exam. And before we get started, I just want to let you know that it's totally okay to take your time when learning manual settings. Even if you only take away one piece of information at the end of this video, that's still progress. And at the same time, once you've learned how all the manual settings work, I also encourage you to incorporate automatic settings if you're shooting digitally. There's no shame in using automatic ISO, shutter speed, or aperture, so it can give you one less thing to think about when fiddling about with your settings and actually focus on capturing the moment. So, load in your roll of film, plug in your SD card, and let's get started. Firstly, we're gonna start talking about ISO. As for film shooters, this will be the first decision you have to make. For digital shooters, you'll have a lot more flexibility as you can change your ISO shot by shot. The ISO is the number here. It normally ranges from between 50 all the way up to 3,200. In simple terms, the higher the ISO number, the more sensitive your roll of film slash digital sensor will be to light. Shooting on a high ISO means you can shoot in areas which don't have much light and still get a photo. The trade-off is that when shooting at a high ISO, you're gonna see a lot more grain in the image, and this can look like you're losing a bit of detail. Compared to at a low ISO, you're gonna get a minimal amount of grain. But your camera is gonna be a lot less sensitive to light. In my opinion, a film around 200 to 400 ISO is a really good place to start. It'll have you covered for shooting without a tripod, inside or outside in the daytime. But if you're shooting outside on a really bright day, then treat yourself to using a lower ISO like 100. This way you'll get minimal grain, retaining more detail. On the flip side, if you're shooting at night and having to rely on street lights, then you might wanna go for an ISO 800, 1600 or even 3200. Next up, we have shutter speed. The shutter speed numbers are written in fractions of a second, and this is how long your camera will expose the frame to light. Picking the right shutter speed will depend on a couple of factors. Firstly, do you have a tripod? If you do, then you can shoot at any shutter speed without having to worry about camera shake. But if you're shooting handheld, then here's a tip. Whatever your focal length is, this is the number followed by the millimeter on your lens. As long as your shutter speed is higher than this number, then you'll avoid camera shake as long as you're standing still with a firm grip on your camera. Here we have a 50 millimeter lens, so therefore I can shoot on any shutter speed at 1 60th of a second or faster. And here is a 110 millimeter lens. So I'll shoot at 1 125th of a second or faster. When I'm shooting a model who's standing still for me, I'll aim to shoot at 125th of a second. This makes sure that I'm definitely freezing them in motion. If I have a tripod, I'm shooting a landscape. I might even go for as long as a one second exposure. If I'm shooting people moving fast in motion, I could even go up to a 500th of a second or 1,000th of a second. This will guarantee that they're not gonna be blurred. Alternatively, if you want to use blur, then shoot at around a quarter of a second. Play about with the different settings. Now, onto aperture. This is how much light your lens will let into the camera. And by doing this, it will also determine how much depth of field you're gonna have in the image. And I promise to not make this video nerdy, so we're gonna leave out all the physics behind that. The one thing that can be a little weird to get your head around is the lower the number is on your aperture, the wider your lens will be. And then the opposite, the larger number you use, the less light that will be let in. If you want to use a shallow depth of field, where what's in front of you is in focus and everything in the background is blurred out, then you're gonna to need to use a smaller number if you want everything from the foreground to the background to be in focus, use a higher number. Here are some photos I took to show this. Here we're shooting at f2, and you can see the post right in front is in focus and everything else is slightly blurred out. And then as we up the aperture number, more of the image comes into focus. And by the time we've reached f16, you can see the trees in the background are also in focus. Now finally, combining all of these settings together. So if I have a low ISO, I'm going to shoot a slow shot speed or a wider aperture, a high ISO with the opposite, slow shot speed will need a narrow aperture, or a lower ISO, fast shot speed with the opposite, a wide aperture will need a faster shot speed or a lower ISO, narrow with the opposite. Now this is the moment where first time photographers get scared, lock their camera away, so stay with me. We got this. If you're shooting on digital, you're going to have a light meter built into your camera. 
And this is what we use to find the balance between these three settings. A lot of film cameras also have a simplified light meter built in. You'll often see a needle on the side of your viewfinder that will go up and down depending on the light. And a second needle would be there as well. And once you line up the two needles, you've got the correct exposure. But please go online, take a look and find out what your camera's light meter should look like. If your camera doesn't have a light meter, then that's okay. You can get plenty of phone apps which have a light meter built in. This makes use of the light meter inside your phone to tell you what settings you should use on your camera. Now, to find the right settings for you, we've got to slow it down. Think about what are your priorities for this photo. Going back to a previous example, if I'm shooting a model, my priority is to freeze them in motion. So let's go for 125th of a second. I then also want a shallow depth of field. So let's go for a low number. How about 2.8? And now, the ISO will be a balance between these two different variables. Your light meter will tell you what this number is. Now, let's say we're shooting a landscape. I'd probably want to have as most of the scene in focus. So let's go for F16. If I don't have a tripod, I'll set my shutter speed to be the closest number above the focal length of my lens. And then the ISO will be whatever my light meter tells me. If I really want to use a lower ISO though, to get even more detail and less grain in the photo, then I might compensate. I move my aperture down to F8. This will let more light into the lens so then I can decrease the sensitivity of my sensor. So I'll move my ISO down. One of the things I like about shooting on film is actually this limitation of what your ISO will be. Once you've loaded in that roll of film, you're stuck at that ISO. Yes, we could talk about pushing and pulling film, but no nerdy stuff, leave it for another day. This makes balancing between the settings a lot easier. Often, I'll keep my shutter speed at 125th of a second. The ISO of the film's not gonna change. And so all I have to do is just change my aperture, depending on what the light meter tells me to do. Easy. I hope that this video has given you more confidence to shoot in manual mode. The more time and practice you put into shooting in manual, the more comfortable you'll feel in different shooting situations with your camera. And given time, you'll be able to look at some of your favorite photographers' photos and understand how they took their photos from a technical point of view. This took me quite a while to wrap my head around all the different numbers. Again, no shame in using automatic mode sometimes. So have fun and I'll see you next time.